Okay. Is that from Mario Bros? Is that Bowser? Yeah. Okay. All right. So recording, guys. So anyway, um, so if you guys can get out the um, 9.4 notes, I want to finish off the notes. I want to do part two today. And then whatever time we have left, I want you to have some homework. You can. The homework is going to be the worksheet at the end. Uh, that's not due till Monday. So if you want to wait till Sunday night to do it, that's all good. I, but, or you can use time on Friday, right? If you want to go out and enjoy tonight and have a day off tomorrow. Like, I don't feel like doing any math work. And I see you guys Friday afternoon. You have your test. And you want to do the homework uh, at the end of this packet on Friday afternoon after the test. Totally fine, too. Not due till Monday. But anyway, um, when you're asked to, um, why do we have parameter equations? The first place, as I mentioned in the video, sometimes you want to break down um, a certain situation to vertical and horizontal components. Like in physics, you do it all the time, like with projectile motion. And time could be like that third variable that X and Y are both in terms of. That's great. You have a way to kind of break that down easily. But if you want to combine those two, like that's called eliminating the parameter. T is called the parameter. Sometimes you use theta or another variable for the parameter. Then you do some sort of substitution, some algebra, and you can get that the set of parameter equations into a rectangular equation. Rectangular equations are ones that have y and x. Um, and to graph them, if you do graph a parameter equation as it looks, you make three columns, right? T, x, and y. And t usually is going to be defined for you, like, okay, you know, I want t to be between negative two and three. Actually, this might be a good demo. Let me pull up the calculator really fast. Um, give me a sec here. Perfect. Okay, so if you go to mode, and, uh, the fourth line there, switch to par. There you go. There's par. Um, and my short-term memory is terrible. What were the equations again? T squared minus four. So you, you go where X is, and it puts T automatically. So T squared minus four. Ah. T squared minus four. And was the other one half T? So I'll put 0.5 T. Yeah, there you go. Now, when you graph it, you graph it a few ways. You, graph, you could graph in the standard window. See what happens. It kind of gives a rough diagram, but you can choose how to do this. Like we want to go from negative two to three. So if you hit window, you can change that to negative two, change that to three. The T step is how precise the graph will be. So basically what it'll do, it'll actually, um, so if I says T step is one, well the calculus is going to give me six points. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, zero, one zero, sorry. Yes, yes, six points. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. So it's going to be a very rough graph. So let me plot six points. Um, X and Y, whatever, that's fine. But you see it's very, it's a very rough graph. And again, you could change X and Y windows too if you wanted to do that. But it's really the T, min, T, max, T set that matter a lot. Now, what if I made this more fine, like point 0.1? <laughs> it's it's going to do 10 times as many points now. Now it's going to do 60 points. So it took a little longer, it looked a little more refined. If you really want to go crazy. See, it's slower. Why is it slower? It's doing more points. See, it's taking a sweet little time. But it's, it's, a, it's a smoother, well, it doesn't look as smooth, I guess, but it's a more refined graph. Uh, what if you change it to, like, say, two? It looks kind of crazy, right? So, anyway, that's just something you can, you can uh, play around with. I think Desmos could do it too. I haven't played around with Desmos. So um, any questions about the stuff I covered on the video? Okay, let's go straight to the part two of the notes then. Okay, part two of the notes. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, so you're given those parameters of equations, construct a chart, graph by hand from negative two to two for T, name the conic. So this will be a conic section. And then is there a way to write the parameter equation without the T? This is called limited parameter. We'll do that also. Then we're going to do uh, some more stuff on the next page. Then the next page. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see how far we got. Oh, actually, wait. Yeah, let's see how far we got. <laughs> it's a lot here, but let's see how far we got. Okay. So let's make a table. Okay. So you got T, X, and Y. 
negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Make it simple, right? Uh, let's solve for x. Uh, well, actually, I'll do y. Y is easier. That's going to be negative six, negative three, zero, one, and sorry, three and six. Let's plug in negative two. I get uh, negative 15, right? No, I get one, negative five. Is that right? Negative seven, uh, negative five, and one. But this is what you're plotting. You're plotting that, the last two columns. So one, negative six. Kind of lost track. Wrong place. Negative five, negative three. Negative seven, zero. Oh, I think I see what's happening. What's what's happening here, guys? What, what, what? You're getting probable totally. Sideways probable, correct. So I kind of suspect. So name the conic, obviously it's parabola. Now the question is, can you um get the equation uh, without was saying um, without the T. Yeah. So, but we know what, how, how problems are set up anyway. Like I know from the previous unit or the previous things we've talked about, I know that um, it's going to be Y squared equals 4PX plus 6. Because the vertex is negative 6, 0, right? No, negative 7, 0. My bad. Negative 7, 0. That's my vertex. So at least I know that, right? How do I solve for p? Or plug one of the points you're given. We, we have, yeah, we have four of the points we can use. Because I don't know what the focus is. I didn't tell you what p is, right? I didn't tell you the focus is direct, so I don't know how to do that. But yes, let's plug in points that, um, so you have 36 equals 4p times 8, uh, 32p 36 out of 32. What does that reduce to? Um, nine. Hold on. Nine eighths? Yeah. So the equation should be y squared equals um, nine halves x plus seven. But I could also done it, as Yuvi is saying, by substitution, right? I could also. So I'm doing part B, by the way, because I just don't have space. So I don't want to move my screen. But you could also have done this, too. Um, you could say T equals what? Uh, y over 3, right? So X equals 2 Y over 3 squared minus 7. X plus 7 equals 2 times Y squared over 9. Y squared is 9 halves x plus 7, same thing. So now you're starting to see a lot of pathways, right? Like, OK, well, I taught you guys about parabolas and how they're set up and standard form. Identify the key characteristics, you're good, right? Um, or you could do substitution. It's <laughs> T by itself and substitute. So either way, it's fine. Um, so again, we're, and we're trying to connect this to what we've done recently. So questions? We good? OK. Let's keep on moving. Okay, writing a parent equation for a relation involving x and y. Okay, so what's happened here? So find the set parent equations to represent this graph. Uh, that's not too hard. Um, so I guess you could choose how you want to set this up. So what if we let, so again, since we uh, let me read this little blurb here. We have been learning techniques for sketching graph of a relation represented by set parent equations. And let me the parameter to find the equations in relation to x and y. Next, to the reverse situation. How can you find a set of parameter equations for a graph or equation or relation? It turns out it's not just one set of parameter equations that represents a relation. So there's several ways you can write it. Okay, that's the whole point. So if t equals x, right? Then how am I going to get... Um, so so basically you have x equals t. And y equals, has to equal something else. How would I solve for what y is going to be? What would I do? Yeah, just just to substitute t in for x, right? And solve for y. Okay, so now my goal is to get y by itself. How would I do that? 
you can expand it or you can just um um but you definitely have to move the two though so you, should, you put one half or over two i don't really care perfect got it there you go so apparently that would represent this right here which is a problem by the way but is that the only way a parametric equation could be written? No, it's not the only way. Okay, it's also right like this. Um, replace t or x equals, sorry, uh, t minus four. I'm sorry, go ahead, Eugene. So x equals t minus four. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, and the, you know what? Yeah, that 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 works too. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so you re replace um, t with x plus four. Um, I'm just gonna do it this way. But yeah, that that could work. Um, you, you're saying in uh, the first what, what, the answer we got in part A replace t with uh, x plus four. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, wait. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see. Oh, yes. Oh, so you're. Uh, got it. Got you. I, I didn't follow. Yeah, you totally could do that. Totally. That. Yeah. Um. There we go. We got the same thing still. Yeah. No. I. I get what you're saying. That makes sense. Yeah. No. Um. What Adi was saying is um replaces t plus four squared x, which we know. That works too. I'm just being a little more um. Consistent way I did the first one. So, okay. So graph both set of a parent equations and calculate verify. I trust you guys know this works. So we'll just move on. We don't have to do this part. So let's keep moving. Okay, moving right along, guys. Set your calculate parametric mode in radian mode. The range of values of the parameter is that using a suitable window graph each of the following your calculator sketch in the same set of axes below. State the conic important features of each conic section. Okay. So you get once you guys get your graphic calculators out, we're gonna do this together in the class. Uh, we're gonna see what happens. And then we're gonna figure out the equations that they um that they would be. Um this seems awfully repetitive. So let's just see how example three goes. Maybe we could forego examples four and five because this seems awfully repetitive. Um, anyway, so let's look at example three here. Uh, let me put my calculator, which I did have open. All right, so the first thing we're going to do. Okay. Ah, okay. Here we go. Okay, y equals. Sorry, uh, go to mode. Switch to parametric. And make sure radian selected, which I do have. Now I'm going to type in cosine. And don't worry if it says T. That's it's totally arbitrary what letter you use. Don't worry about that at all. And sign T and see what happens. And um, we're going to graph from 0 to 2 pi because they said so. Okay, great. It's all set up for us. So let's just graph it. Okay. So what do you think that got us here? Not quite. Mine is not showing up. It's a circle. Let, let me tighten the window a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. It's not showing up on the graph. I'll, I'll, I'll see what you're doing wrong. I'll explain why it's a circle in a sec, guys. Okay, here we go. I know it looks like an ellipse, but the diameter or the radius is consistent. So that's going to be a circle. Yes, of course. Right. So it's a circle, the center is zero, zero, and a raise of one. Now, why does this make sense? This is this is the part that's really cool. This part I, I like a lot. 
Would you agree? The equation circle matches this, right? That's triple to the one. Because center zero zero raised to one. Uh, the place, that's the closest to the place by sign. It's actually a statement. The sine square is plus square to one. Yeah, yeah that's the tag integral of the So it makes sense. That should make sense. Totally. So you're starting to see some connections it's having with the conics, right? Um, without me saying much else, what is it going to happen to the part B now? Good, good, raise to three. Yeah. If I simply switch, yes, correct. So if I insert three, insert three, see, I know it looks like an ellipse. It's not an ellipse. I know it looks like one. Still a circle. Uh, let's switch colors for a bit of contrast. Wait, so guys. Okay. Oh, I know. We're good there. Yeah. Looking at problem A, just to prove that. It equals a circle equation, which so you would isolate beta because that's the key. Is that what you would do? Not quite because you're gonna have an inverse cosine, it'll be kind of weird. So, how would you like you know how the other ones we're, 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 gonna, we're gonna get there? Yeah, there's a conjecture. We'll, we'll get just hold on to that thought. Um, get part C. Let's see what happens if I add negative one and add two. Now, in this case, I'm probably not gonna get a circle, or maybe we will. I don't know. Let's see. So let me do negative one. So I'll, negative one plus and insert two plus zoom. Sorry, just go here. And let me change my window a little bit to see a bit more. Negative six, six, negative six. Six. Yeah, so the center change, right? <clears throat> it's still going to be a circle. It looks like the center change to what? No, one, two. That's what it looks like, yeah. And we'll work out the math so you can see why that makes sense. Uh, let's go to um, uh, dark blue. Again, another circle. The raise is still three from before. The center is going to be negative one comma two, right? Got to count carefully. Yeah. Okay. And you can always trace it too if you wanted to. Uh, yeah. Two. Um, wait one sec. Hold on. Oh, I went too far. Gosh darn it. Ah. Awesome. Sorry about that. I went too far for my center. Yeah, I should have done this. My apologies. Here we go. Okay, my apologies. All right. Now, without graphing, can you describe what's going to happen for part D? Yeah, we totally can now. Now you're starting to see the connection here. Um, guys, quiet, please. Thank you. That'd be four, negative seven is your center. Um, and the radius will be four. So radius will be two. So, you, so we see the conjecture here, right? Now we see what's happening. And then you're asked to write the rectangular equation in terms of x and y for um, a through c. How can we use trigonometry to justify a relationship? Well, we kind of did that already. Um, so let's let's work these out, part e. So you could just say this, right? Um, x squared plus y squared equals one. So cosine squared theta, right? So there you go. Or actually, I should have done the trig first. 
Or to justify it. There we go. That's just that. That's fine. Um, same thing here, right? You're going to have um, x squared plus y squared equals 9, right? Because that's what we saw in the graph. Well, if we replace x with 3 cos theta, replace y with 3 sine theta, it makes sense, right? That's how I'm justifying it. Factor out, divide everything by 9. And all is good. Okay. And then this one here, um, it's going to be a little crazy. Um, but then we have x minus 1, uh, sorry, x plus 1 squared plus y um, minus 2 squared equal 9. So then you just replace... I think you guys get the idea. I don't have to work it out. It should work itself out if you were to plug it in. Ultimately, you would get the same result. So, um, does that make sense how we did that? Okay. Now, there's still yet another formulaic way you can kind of go. I know all of you are kind of asking about that. Um, so one way you could think of it, and this is a lead to polar, which we're not there yet. We'll be there next week. Um, but generally speaking, it's kind of like this. You guys don't have to write this down because we're going to talk about it next week. X equals R cos theta. Y equals R sine theta. X over R, which is from the unit circle, is cos theta, y over r, which is sine theta. Um, so that's, it would be the radius. So the coefficient uh, uh, next to the trig function is going to be the radius. Okay, so in this instance, it'd be one. Um, for this one, we want, for this one, would be three. Yeah. So um, Right. And then you have these um, translations, right? So like the negative one is actually acts as a translation, right? So you, you could, um, if you move the negative one to the left side and it becomes x plus one, x plus one over r would be cosine theta. And so um, if you were to. Which one isolate? You want, you want to isolate the trick function, actually. Because we know at, at its core that this is what's happening, right? This is really the, the central. The underlying concept yep. for this, right? And so if you were to isolate cosine theta here, what would you get? You get x plus one over three. Isolate sine theta, what would you get? Y minus two over three. You replace the cosine sines and the Pythagorean trig identity, which we know is true, with those expressions. And that's how you would get the equation of the circle afterwards. That's what would happen. Yeah, my, and now your mind's blown? Or are you still thinking, Oliver? So you're not isolating the instance. No, you're isolating a trig function. And you're using the unknown concept, yes. That's what's happening. But we're going to be exploring this in great detail all next week and the week after. So just trust the polar curves. It really just blows your mind. Okay. Now, example four. Again, I'm not going to do this whole thing because in the interest of time, I want to be mindful. Because I know you guys have a lot of classes today. They're not school tomorrow, though. So I'm not don't feel too bad for you guys. But um, let's just see what happens for part A. Um, anyone want to take a stab what's happening in, for example for what kind of shape we're getting you're going to get an ellipse yeah you're going to get an ellipse so let me go ahead and um, whoa what's going on here yeah let me go ahead and delete some of this stuff here keep that as is delete some stuff here change that to a 4 okay and let's graph it. Weird. I know it looks like a circle. <laughs> it's actually an ellipse. Trust me. It's actually an ellipse. Weird. I, that does look more circular than the previous one. This is just the TID 404 resolution. That's what it would be. Oh. Dude. Um, you do this oh. Yes, exactly. Well, yeah, because that's what X equals. Exactly. Right. Um, but we are going to see 
you know, a lot of wicked things the next couple of weeks. So just hold on to that because there's a lot of, well, we're going to switch up like crazy. So in this case, that's an ellipse. The center is at zero, zero. And the equation is going to be um, x squared over nine plus y squared over 16 equals one. And you can use, you know, some um, bit of algebra or, I mean, the same thing. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. The Pythagorean trig identity. It kind, of, it kind of all comes back to that. So then I kind of know what's ha what's going to happen here. It's going to be x squared over twenty five plus y squared over four equals one, right? Actually, that will look more elliptical. We'll just change it really fast. So that will be five, and that will be a two. Yes, that looks more elliptical, obviously. And then here, the um, the center changes, right? That'll be um, x plus two squared over nine plus. You guys see how I'm how I'm, how I'm doing this? So now, hopefully, you can see what's happening. Um, screen. So generally speaking, what's happening is this: I'm doing green. X will equal um, h plus. It's kind of tricky. I don't like using, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call it A just for the sake of it, but I know it's kind of, it's not how I want to write it, but I'm just going to go, go, go with this, where we know that's X minus H squared over A squared plus Y minus K squared over B squared equals one. Assuming A is bigger than B, mind you, assuming A is bigger than B. If it's reversed, then you converse the letters if you want. But whatever coefficient you see, this is what I care about. Whatever coefficient you see from the trig function, that's you square the blow x. Well, you can see in front of the sine function, you square it for the blow y. So this goes with y, this goes with that. So the whole a and b thing is a little confusing. That's why I'm a little not comfortable writing like that. But just recognize that whatever's next to cosine goes over, goes below x. Whatever's next to sine goes below y. Oh, good. Don't you not have to square it? Because you can just put the number under it and then have the whole thing, the fraction squared. Please. Sure, you could do that too. Sure, you could do that too. You x minus, yeah, x plus two over. Uh, yes, right. So you're saying this. Um, so that would make it so you don't square it. True, true. So you're saying um, like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's fine. Yeah, that works. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's look at. I th I think I proved e to you guys already, so I don't have to do e. But let's look at example four b, and then um, I think what I'll do is I'll I'll, uh, I'll pause after example four uh because i think i don't want to rush this so I'll, I'll make a video have you guys watch the video on friday or you can watch it later later today i'll try to make it this afternoon because i don't want to um jam pack all this stuff before 9 40 i don't think that's makes too much sense we got 9 40 right yeah yeah um so let me just finish off uh part d here of example four part e i kind of already did for you guys anyway as i did parts a b and c i already did part e of number four. Okay. The vertices are that. Covertice is that. I'm going to plot just so I can visualize it, right? So let's plot. Two. I don't need to calculate anymore. Let's just get it out of the way. Okay. So two, negative one. Uh, two, negative nine, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, one, negative five. And three, negative five. So your ellipse looks like this. What's the center of that ellipse? Two, negative five. So I'm going to say, uh, and this is one, obviously, and that's four. So I'm going to say x equals two plus four cos theta. No, um, two plus cos theta. And y equals negative five plus four sine theta. Your parametric, your parametric equations. 
and you can test it out if you want, see what happens. But if you were to plug into X squared plus Y squared, blah, 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 it should work itself out. Because I do expect the true equation to be this, or the, not true, the rectangular equation to be this, X minus two squared over um, one plus Y plus five squared over 16 equals one. Uh, and, and, and it makes sense. Okay. Actually, I think it's better. Yeah, actually, I like that idea better. Yeah, but I'll start here and then convert it there. Sure. Oh, so it helps you see it. Yeah. Because again, the underlying concept is the Pythagorean trig identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Okay, let me make sure you guys at least have enough to do these problems. But I'm still gonna make a video on the rest of the notes because I should. Um, yeah, I think you guys should have enough to do these problems, but I'll I'll, I'll finish off um, I'll finish off the uh, the notes in a video. So I still have to do what um, page ten, page nine. Yeah, so I got to do the last few pages. So I'll do this video. I'll have a chance later this afternoon to get it done. Other than that, we have about ten minutes left. I know you guys got a lot of classes today. Um, let me stop.